the telephone. There are about 200 million all across America. And now you can get 30 minutes of U.S. Sprint long distance from any one of them free. So go ahead, pick up any phone. Get 30 minutes of 100% fiber optic long distance free and the best overall savings. Call Sprint now and talk with the best. It's a fight for survival. dangerous predator of all may soon put a stop to life in the wilderness. It's a struggle for the creatures roaming wild and free on safari. Thursday nights at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, only on the Discovery Channel. Wonders of aviation take to the skies on wings. Anytime, anywhere, when duty calls, get ready to fly and fight. America's top guns have no time to waste. The sky's the limit on Great Plains, the F-14 Tomcat. On the 25th of February, 1979, the Russian Kiev-class warship Minsk passed through the Turkish Straits into the Mediterranean. Classed as a cruiser, the Minsk was nonetheless an aircraft carrier. But its comparatively small size and total commitment to vertical takeoff aircraft did give Western analysts a chance to study the Soviet thinking on naval aviation. Clearly, Russian strategists did not see the need for large carriers able to support a variety of aircraft types. American thinking, on the other hand, has gone towards the development of massive carriers. Often nuclear-powered, these, the largest of man's mobile creations, are able to convey and support several different types of aircraft. They provide the U.S. with the option of sending its potent air power to areas where it does not control ground airstrips, as was the case in various stages of the Second World War, Vietnam and more recently Libya. An attack carrier can only be perceived as the ultimate gunboat. But if air power is to provide the weapons, then it also became the risk. Up to 5,000 lives and an almost irreplaceable amount of technology girthed in one steel hull 
these vessels must be the most inviting target for any aerial attack. That this is not the case is almost entirely due to one remarkable aircraft, the Grumman F-14 Tomcat. America's involvement with carrier forces is greater than any other nation. It was aircraft from the Japanese Carrier Task Force that devastated Pearl Harbor and actually guaranteed US participation in World War II. It was only from the deck of the carrier Hornet that Doolittle was able to lead the B-25 retaliation attack. And although this did little effective damage, it did break the myth that Japan's homeland was beyond Allied reach very early in the conflict. The Coral Sea battle again proved the potency of the carrier-launched aerial attack. But it was Midway that was to prove the greatest carrier against carrier conflict. It was also the American victory to set the trend for the remainder of the war. But if Midway was to show the strength of carriers, it also demonstrated that they were vulnerable to the very type of aircraft they carry. And since that time, it has always been the threat of aerial attack that has been uppermost in the minds of carrier commanders. By the mid-1950s, the principal threat to American carrier forces still came from the air. Russia had developed particularly long-range maritime reconnaissance bombers, such as the Tu-20 NATO-designated Bear. With massive turboprop engines driving counter-rotating propellers, it was not fast compared with fighters of the time. But it could carry supersonic anti-ship missiles, which could be launched with devastating effect on any potential surface target. Against this combination of long range and high speed, the US Navy had to completely rethink the role of its fighter aircraft. To counter the Soviet threat, the Navy had to develop a very specialist aircraft, not a fighter in the tradition of previous conflicts, rather a long-range all-weather interceptor. To fill this role, and do so well, McDonald developed the F-4 Phantom.
The Phantom, a massive plane for its time, was to provide the speed, the altitude, and the range that would keep missile-carrying aircraft at a safe distance. But its most important feature, and a break from previous convention, was the use of two crew members. The second crew member providing radar and other information to the pilot. The pilot's role was to merely get the aircraft as close as possible to its prey because the F-4 was designed around one other unique concept, that of having no armament other than its radar-aimed missiles. The Phantom not only proved a useful Navy aircraft, but it was also adopted by the Air Force for a variety of fighter, reconnaissance and ground attack roles in Vietnam. But whilst it was often successful against enemy MiGs with its Sidewinder and Sparrow missiles, it had to be upgraded with a cannon for close encounters with the lighter Russian-made fighters, which were invariably more agile and hence extremely dangerous. Intelligence data gathered on the improvements to Soviet cruise missiles and their use from not only above but also below and on the surface continued to worry US naval strategists who knew from their own experiments the devastating effect this new type of weapon could cause. They asked the obvious question, could an anti-missile weapon be developed? Hughes Weapons Division thought so. They offered the AIM-54 Phoenix missile, which although having the disadvantage of being large and heavy, could, if required, actually lock on to another missile, even at a range of 50 miles. The problem now was to find an aircraft that could lift it, and still fly at speed and over long distances. But for some time, just such an aircraft had been contemplated by Defence Secretary McNamara, who would also require it to perform the tactical fighter role. The ambitions of his scheme are shown here. The United States Air Force, the United States Navy, one new aircraft for both services. Tactical Fighter Experimental, the new TFX, a program under executive management of the Aeronautical Systems Division. Designated as F-111, both versions will have a full-scale mock-up inspection late this summer. Wings will return in a moment. Life's finer pleasures. Happily, some more affordable like Grey Poupon Dijon Mustard, created from an original Dijon recipe so fine it even has white wine to enhance fillets, enliven sauces, and dress up salad dressings. So enjoy one of life's finer pleasures. Pardon me, would you have any Grey Poupon? But of course, Grey Poupon, one of life's finer pleasures. I rarely take pills for pain. Kent Cotton suffers from minor muscle pain. Asper cream really works for me. I just rub in Asper cream and it works without any odor. I can always rely on Asper cream. Rub in Asper cream for fast pain relief without aspirin or odor. Rolaids is chalky. Ann Collan is an ex-Rolaids user. Now she uses Tempo. Tempo is smooth, Tempo is chewy, and Tempo it gives me quick relief. You wouldn't believe how fast I was relieved. Great tasting Tempo, a better way to get antacid relief. The average cost of this luxury car is $37,000. The average cost of the American home is $134,000. Yet the cost to examine this magazine is nothing. Call now and we'll send you Money Magazine to examine risk-free. If you like it, do nothing and we'll continue your subscription with articles on ways to live better, invest better, save better. Call 1-800-950-2900. If you find money is not for you, then just write cancel on the bill and send it back. The issue is yours to keep free. Otherwise, we'll continue your subscription with 11 more issues for a total of 12, payable in four installments of just $7.99 each. And while your taxes average $4,800, these financial guides cost you nothing. So call now. We'll also send you Money's Financial Advisor free. And while the average phone bill is over $45, this phone call will cost you nothing. Money's risk-free offer. 
1-800-950-2900. My heart is heavy as lead. The, the Discovery Channel spread. Salute to Black History Month continues you with a look at the early days of jazz day. on Central Avenue in L.A. and the soft sounds of Ernie Andrews well, and all the people on an American album. Why Friday at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, so only on The Discovery Channel. And now we return to Wings. The TFX project, although mainly the brainchild of General Dynamics, subcontracted most of the Navy's F-111B model work to Grumman Aviation. The 111B, now a multi-role fighter, had to be able to accommodate the massive Phoenix missile. However, because the basic design was to provide a medium tactical strike bomber, the overall concept resulted in an aircraft that the Navy considered far too heavy for carrier use. Even though several successful firings of the enormous Phoenix missile were achieved, by the time this rare footage of the Navy's version of the TFX was shot, the project was already abandoned and the carrier trials a mere formality. The principal problem of the 111B was the program's inability to reduce the aircraft's weight below 80,000 pounds. There were also shortcomings with the undercarriage and the general lack of pilot visibility on deck landings. However, at no stage was the Navy, with its specialist needs, in any way optimistic about adopting the 111B as a fighter, when, in every other way, it was an Air Force bomber. By the late 60s, the Defense Department knew the Navy required a replacement for the now aging Phantom, as information becoming available indicated that Russia was about to produce land-based swing-wing fighters with a superior performance. The problem was adequately summarized in 1969 by Admiral Connolly. There is the ever-present threat from surface to surface or surface to air missile from either shore stations or missile carrying Soviet ships. The basic problem is that our stable of Navy fighters to meet these threats is rapidly losing its edge. Our F-8 Crusader was started in late 1952, over 15 years ago. It became operational 11 years ago. Our F-4 was a clearly superior fighter when it became operational in 1961. Now the gap is closing. It is a tribute to the skill of the nation's fighter pilots that a high kill ratio has been maintained in Vietnam. We cannot depend on maintaining this margin indefinitely. The time has come to equal the skill of our fighter pilots with a far superior fighter aircraft, one that will be superior now and for the next 15 years. Fortunately, Grumman, with their vast experience gained from the 111B, had already strived to produce a suitable defense fighter to fill the void described by Connolly. Grumman experimented with a wide variety of models and weapon formats to try to produce a concept that could both act as a dogfighter as well as fleet defense fighter. Their Model 303 clearly fitted the requirement. Benefiting from lessons learned in the 111, the new aircraft was to rely upon expensive but proven materials such as boron and titanium, and the wing box area which had caused problems in the 111 was to be doubly strengthened against any failure. Two turbofan engines would provide speed and economy, and two separate fins would ensure aircraft stability should one engine fail. Model 303 would carry the widest weapon spectrum of any anti-aircraft vehicle then in service. It would start with an M61 cannon for close encounters and dogfighting, the traditional short and medium-range sidewinder and sparrow missiles, 
and include the long-range, deadly accurate Phoenix weapon. Having produced an airframe which was highly innovative, Grumman initially relied upon already proven TF-30 engines to get their aircraft into the sky. These power plants were in service elsewhere and a known commodity. However, Model 303, right from its early design stages, had allowed for substantially improved power plants to be fitted with very little modification as soon as they became available. By adopting this something new, something proved mix, Grumman succeeded in reducing the risks without limiting the potential of their brainchild. Minor modifications allowed much more substantial engines to upgrade the aircraft as a matter of routine. The overall accessibility of 303 was maximized by providing a fuselage that was almost totally surrounded by quick opening panels so that servicing in the limited and difficult environment of a carrier at sea could be achieved with maximum effectiveness. Similar to Grumman's approach to the power plants was their attitude towards the avionics package. Here too, they chose to use an established design to expedite the production of the early aircraft. However, as more sophisticated avionics became available, the early models could be retrofitted easily. By December 21st, 1970, the prototype, now referred to as the F-14 and named Tomcat, was ready for its maiden flight at Calverton, New York. Test pilots Bob Smythe and Bill Miller had to wait all day for final adjustments, and it was only in the late afternoon, with the threat of snow the following day, that they finally got aircraft number one into the air. The fight lasted only 10 minutes and was generally uneventful. Both pilots said that though they had only a short flight, the Tomcat behaved well. The next day, the weather broke, and it would be nine days before it was deemed safe to fly the Tomcat again. This time, Miller was to take the front position and Bob Smythe the rear, and this flight was to be anything but uneventful. Prototype number one had not been in the air long when its chase plane noticed what seemed to be smoke coming from the aircraft. In fact, it was hydraulic oil leaking under pressure. Within minutes, all of the controlling surfaces of the plane ceased to function as the pilots made their approach through the cold morning air.
a mere 100 feet from the ground when there was no likelihood that the aircraft would reach the runway, the pilots ejected. Four seconds later, prototype one ceased to beep. Wings will return after these messages. <coughs> Ricola, the all-natural herb cough drop imported from Switzerland. Ricola has been soothing throats and relieving coughs naturally for over 60 years. The Kraft Cheese and Macaroni Club is called to order. Everyone got their packets? What packets? Arnold, don't you want to play the Kraft Mystery Message game? To save cheese packets with mystery symbols from boxes of Kraft macaroni and cheese. If you solve the mystery message, you can win a magic t-shirt. Or cheese and macaroni sleeping bag. Or an Apple computer. And Arnold, the more packets you save means the more cheese and macaroni I get to eat. Game details on specially marked boxes of Kraft macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Sable is a mercury, so naturally it's comfortable. Comfortable even in the corners. Comfort and control, together in one car. Isn't it time you looked into a mercury? Come in today and get $600 customer cash on Sable from Lincoln Mercury. The number one fitness exercise in the world is cross-country skiing. And now it can be duplicated in your home with Easy Glider. Just 20 minutes every other day, an hour a week is all it takes to strengthen and firm all major muscle groups and lose weight aerobically. You can burn up to 360 calories per workout, plus tone chest, arms and back, calves, thighs, and buttocks. Notice the quality construction of the sturdy metal frame. This handsome unit folds down quickly for easy storage. Other ski simulators cost as much as $500, but Easy Glider is now just $49.95, and your satisfaction is absolutely guaranteed. Grab the bargain. Call toll-free now. Was $59.95, now only $49.95. Call 1-800-527-3900. Use your credit card to avoid COD charges or send check a money order for $49.95 plus $9 shipping and handling to Easy Glider, Department 105, Canton, Ohio. Call 1-800-527-3900. A house without locks. A train without wheels. And a wristwatch communicator. These are not gadgets out of a science fiction story inventions being perfected today. Open a window on the future and go beyond 2000 every Thursday night at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. And now we return to Wings. Prototype number two was rushed forward. This aircraft was allocated the task of testing the Tomcat's performance at low speed and carrying ordnance. But in the light of the loss of number one, it now had a radically increased workload. To assist achieving these new goals, in-flight refueling was employed very early in the program, thus enabling one aircraft to stay aloft for hours of strenuous appraisal. In late August, Another aircraft, originally scheduled as number 12, now to be redesignated 1X as a replacement of the ill-fated original prototype, was wheeled out of Grumman's Calverton plant. And this plane would take over the high-speed testing role. By now, Smythe, Miller and the other test pilots had established a real affinity with what Grumman were convinced was the real answer to the Navy's problem. But still, opposition manufacturers and the natural pessimism of Congress had yet to be overcome. And whilst the Navy had confidence in the Tomcat concept, 
there were still many trials ahead. Because at no stage was Model 303 to be a cheap aircraft. The sorts of money invested and the commitment necessary were already putting Grumman under considerable pressure. The company naturally was proud of having developed what was undoubtedly a major breakthrough. Here, a senior Defense Department official is being given a close-up inspection of the features of Prototype 1X and a personal tour over the intricate cockpit layout by Miller. Throughout 1971, ground-based testing of the first prototypes continued. These aircraft were put through severe testing when little was known about how they would react. Here is prototype number two with a complete ordnance load, achieving the almost unachievable. Throughout the entire prototype program, several aircraft were made with no intention of ever being flown. Their sole role was to be tested to destruction, as seen here. By this method, it was hoped that any flaws in design or manufacture would be identified. Prior to carrier testing, a prototype was catapult tested, and on June 28, 1972, the first Tomcat flown by a Navy pilot was to land on the aircraft carrier Forrestal on duty off Norfolk. After a series of touch and goes, the landing was effected by aircraft number 10. But within minutes, a small malfunction, a leak in the hydraulics of the nose gear, appeared. the two pilots were informed. On hand as a minor adjustment was made was Bill Miller. But the look on the faces of the Navy's test pilots said everything. This film you are seeing now was to be flown to the Congressional Committee for a final decision on the Tomcat within hours. As it happened, the committee gave the project its endorsement. But Bill Miller's luck was to run out 24 hours later when flying the same aircraft, number 10, he was to make a minor technical oversight. He and the plane were lost. But the program had to continue, and by late 72, full-scale production was in progress. The Tomcat was no longer a prototype. Rather, it was to be the Navy's fighter for the future. the Tomcat was still undergoing development in its weapon systems. It was to demonstrate the most spectacular achievement of any fighter aircraft with Operation 6 on 6. Utah, Bloodhound 204, taxi one, revetment storming area. Up number 1284, 1.5 en route. Alternate uh, will be China Lake, 0 plus 20. 204, taxi runway 21. Go altimeter 3004. Time 1440 straight up. Two zero four. Taxi across runway two seven. Roger. 
Roger. objective was to demonstrate the effectiveness of the Hughes Phoenix missile system when attacking six different targets at one time. To do this, two air-launched drones, which would represent enemy fighter aircraft at supersonic speed, three obsolete training aircraft, which would represent larger enemy bombers, and one Mark II supersonic land-based drone, which would represent a launched missile, were sacrificed in the cause of presenting the Tomcat with an horrendous array of targets. With Navy crew at the controls, each of the six targets were individually identified on the radar scope and allocated a Phoenix. Cameras on. Fires in the air. Six in the air. At one time, all six Phoenix were in the air, streaking towards their individual targets, which could have been up to a range of 50 miles away. As it happens, only four of the six were destroyed, but this was due entirely to a malfunction in the two drones. The information collected proved conclusively that even under six to one odds, the Phoenix Tomcat combination had a success rate of 80% or better. Wings will return in a moment. Catch Secrets of Nature, Wednesdays at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. Introducing a completely different Mercury Cougar. Introducing Pulse Quickening Comfort. The all new Cougar from Mercury, where comfort and control are one. The most acclaimed nature documentary in the history of television is now available on video cassette. Witness nature in all its awesome power and deadly beauty. Time Life Video and WNET announce the Nature Video Library. A series so remarkable, the New York Times hails it as television at its most impressive. Your first video adventure takes you to Hawaii, islands of the fire goddess. Born in the conflict of fire and water, Hawaii is a land of amazing contrasts, a kaleidoscope of color, a menacing land of sudden death. This is Hawaii, as few have seen it. Call now to receive Hawaii at the low introductory price of only $9.99 plus shipping and handling. Other exciting video cassettes will follow at only $19.99. Keep only those you want. Cancel at any time.
Credit card customers call 1-800-435-0100 now to get your first video cassette, Hawaii, at the special introductory price of just $9.99. Or send $13.22 to Nature, P.O. Box 1880, Department 1, Alexandria, Virginia. Or call now, 1-800-435-0100. Every day, the Discovery Channel takes you on a global adventure. To help plan your journey, the Discovery Channel presents TDC, the monthly program guide that takes you to places like Japan, a culture rich in tradition and beauty. Meet the artists of a different breed on the streets of New York. Explore the wilds of Africa and witness the power of nature. TDC fine-tunes your viewing experience on the Discovery Channel. It keeps you informed and up-to-date on every minute of programming. Let TDC become your guide and receive 12 monthly issues for only $11.95. Call 1-800-TDC-8343. That's 1-800-TDC-8343. Your ticket to adventure. Being a Mercury, Topaz not only knows how to hold people, but also how to hold the road. It's a car that unites comfort and control. Picture yourself in a Mercury. Come in today and get $600 customer cash on Topaz from Lincoln Mercury. And now we return to Wings. The first two squadrons to carry a deployed Tomcats were VF-1 Wolfpack and VF-2 Bounty Hunters. And with their induction, the Navy now had in one plane an answer to the missile threat and an advanced dogfighter. is a new experience, even for veteran pilots. Placing 80,000 pounds and $40 million worth of high technology onto a few hundred square feet of deck takes its toll on men and machinery alike. Undercarriages and airframe have to come to terms with phenomenal stress, and sometimes not always with the desired result. Here, a Tomcat hits the deck of the Forestal and the undergear gave way. Still containing fuel and probably armament, this aircraft has effectively blocked the landing approach to all other aircraft and must be quickly removed. The flight crew leave the scene almost routinely. During September 1976 in the North Atlantic, two other airmen were even luckier. Their Tomcat was parked in the ready position on the carrier John F. Kennedy when suddenly it lunged across the deck and fell into the ice-cold sea. The pilots were able to eject, but the Tomcat fell to the watery depths.
Underwater salvage experts were brought from Germany to retrieve its crushed carcass, rather than risk it falling into the hands of Soviet spy boats, which witnessed the entire event. The reason for the Navy going to such lengths was not merely to protect the secrets of the Tomcat. That would have been sufficient reason alone. But the Navy also wanted to ensure that the missilery carried at the time did not fall into Soviet hands. Miramar Naval Air Base is fighter town, the home of the famous Top Gun Trophy Contest. Here, pilots are given an opportunity to pace their F-14s against other aircraft specially modified to resemble the flying characteristics of potential Soviet adversaries. These aircraft are often lighter and extremely maneuverable. This Tomcat crew, probably already with considerable experience, will have to set their wits and their machines against pilots who are veterans of combat in one or even more theatres. Here, a modified A4 Mongoose and a modified T-38 will compete with a Tomcat. The T-38 is virtually a flying legend of nimbleness and should ordinarily easily outmaneuver an aircraft of F-14 bulk. But the Tomcat's technology and the constant training of its crew have set new parameters for this type of dogfight. The Tomcat is not only required to excel in exercise, but also to compete and win when the game is real, as it did over the Gulf of Sidra in August 1981. A Hawkeye reconnaissance plane from a carrier deployed in exercises off Libya observed Libyan airspace for a potential threat. 
tensions were high as both sides had previously tested each other to the brink. On this day, the patrolling Hawkeye detected two fighters traveling at high speed towards the carrier. They were later identified as Su-22s. High in the sky, the Hawkeye conveyed its vital information back to the carrier's control, and two patrolling Tomcats were sent to intercept. The two sets of aircraft approached each other at high speed. Suddenly, one of the SUs launched a missile which fell far short of the American planes. This aggressive act had to be countered and there was no more suitable aircraft to do so than a Tomcat. The first aircraft allowed its prey to pass by before it completely reversed its position. Then it came upon the ill-placed 22 and quickly dispatched it. The second Tomcat was only moments behind, identifying its prey, which had veered west and attempted to drop to a lower position. Seconds after the first Su-22 was destroyed, its companion was to suffer the same fate. With the assistance of fleet refuel, American carriers can be replenished and kept at sea for months on end, enabling naval strategists to bring aerial firepower within range of trouble spots around the world. The Second World War, Korea, Vietnam and Libya all demonstrated the importance of having this flexibility. But it's only with the development of the Tomcat that the Navy can be sure that its floating runways are impervious to attack.
Tomcats, like all naval aircraft, have to be able to function at combat status in any climate and many environments. As Tomcat pilots would say, it's anywhere, any weather, and Coming up next week on Wings, through the history of aviation, few aircraft have achieved the heights of the Stratofortress. Meet a legend on Great Plains, the B-52. Up next, in the deep of the Mediterranean Sea, discover some secrets of nature. And at 11 Eastern, a series of devastating events that ravished the nation of Cambodia on Southeast Asia Revisited. American Medical Television, Sunday mornings, only on the Discovery Channel. Now there's a remarkable new product H that turns ordinary tap water H into clean, fresh-tasting drinking water in seconds. Who the new Brita water filter system. Simply pour ordinary tap water into the Brita pitcher. The patented filter removes the taste of chlorine and 90% of lead. The amazing Brita. Crisp, clean drinking water. Homemade. Introducing a completely different Mercury Cougar. Introducing Pulse Quickening Cup. The all-new Cougar from Mercury, where comfort and control are one. Behold the dark ages of fitness. But now, introducing Recline Rider. It's comfort on wheels, and you won't get as sore or cramped as you would hunched over a stationary bike. Experts agree, legs working in line with a heart provide better circulation while exercising. Focus on muscles in your legs and buttocks. Firm up fast. Burn calories, too. Recline Rider has quality features you'd expect to find only on the most expensive reclining cycles. The comfortable seat adjusts for different heights. A wide range of tension adjustments provides for constant challenge. And Recline Rider's precision-weighted flywheel makes pedaling smooth. Get unmatched quality for just three easy payments of $29.95. And that is a comforting thought. So if you're inclined to fitness, call toll-free now. Call toll-free 1-800-648-4700. We'll bill your credit card three easy payments of just $29.95 each. Get a 60-day home trial before the last payment is billed. The total price, just $89.85 plus $10 shipping and handling. Call 1-800-648-4700. And now, a moment of discovery. Before you were walking, before you were talking, or even figured out what you were eating, you figured out how to have a good time. Fun is the best thing to have. Ask any kid. All Sally needs is a little imagination, while Joseph paddles with a new friend. Hans prefers an old-time favorite, and Melissa just wants someone to love. You can catch a wave or play on shore, like your toys high-tech or homemade. But experts of all ages agree, leave your worries behind. Be a child at heart and you'll never be too old to play. Mercury introduces Cougar XR7. Supercharger. Speed sensitive steering. Anti-lock brakes. All this and the quality of a Mercury. Like a Mercury. Predators. They're part of the picture playing an important role in the balance of nature. 
celebrate National Wildlife Week. Team up with the National Wildlife Federation and the Discovery Channel for Predators in Action for five nights, premiering March 19th, only on the Discovery Channel.